Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To celebrate World Heritage Week, we had a series of events, and this would be the concluding event to celebrate the World Heritage Week, which is generally from 19th to 25th of November every year. And in this concluding event, we have an illustrated lecture on heritage and community, an inclusive people-based approach to be delivered by Shangamitra Basu, Professor, Department of Architecture and Regional Planning, Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. Before we go on to the actual lecture, I would like to request uh, Dr. Jayanta Shengupta, Secretary and Curator of Victoria Memorial Hall, to address the audience. Good evening, everybody, and a warm welcome to this evening's lecture by Professor Shangamitra Basu uh, on heritage and community. Uh, an inclusive, people-based approach, uh, which is one of the major events with which we are celebrating World Heritage Week from 19th to 25th November. And it's a great privilege and honor for us to have Professor Shangamitra Bosu here. As you know, she is professor in the Department of Architecture and Regional Planning in the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. And she's one of India's leading experts in the fields of historic preservation, sustainable tourism, heritage management, participatory planning, housing and neighborhood planning, and architectural pedagogy. She has served as a member of the National Monuments Authority, which is an apex body of the Ministry of Culture, Government of India. She is a member of the editorial and review boards of several peer-reviewed journals and is also a member of the Scientific Committee and the National Advisory Committee of the General Assembly and Scientific Symposium of ICOMOS, the International Council on Monuments and Sites, which was held in India in 2017. Over the past three years, we have received an enormous amount of support and advice from her as a member of the Technical Committee appointed by the Ministry of Culture for the modernization and upgradation of the Victoria Memorial Hall. Since we have sort of taken her help for granted, it never occurred to me to formally thank her for the, uh, for the rather thankless task that she has performed for us. So I take this opportunity to go ahead and thank you on behalf of everybody in the Victoria Memorial Hall. Uh, we're also grateful that she has readily agreed to take time off from her busy schedule at IIT Kharagpur to come here and speak during this World Heritage Week on a critically important subject, which is the centrality of community initiatives to the preservation of our heritage. I'm sure this will be an important corrective to all of us who are typically prone to looking at the state for everything. So that's all I have to say for now. Please enjoy the lecture and please do so after switching off your mobile phones or putting it in silent mode. Uh, I'm saying this rather bluntly because in the past my colleague Raju Raman uh, has used his gently mocking and humorous style to make this exhortation and that has not always worked. So uh, here I am uh, doing this. So thank you very much here for being here, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Shanghumitra Boshu to speak on heritage and community and inclusive people-based approach. <laughs> Professor Boshu. Uh, Jointo Shengupta's remark uh, reminds me of a saying which we learned in school in Hindi, ki baat ki devata baat se mante hain, laat ki devata laat se hi mante hain. Uh, so you have to give the kind of medicine that is supposed to be uh, administered in a particular situation. I have to pay attention to the current year. I have to say that 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 I Thank you, Dr. Sengupta, and thank you. Uh, and thank you everybody for coming and uh, giving me the opportunity to speak in this August gathering and on a such a nice occasion of the Heritage Week. And uh, I, 
I think I must thank you that it has given me enormous uh, opportunity and pleasure every time I come to Victoria Memorial to sort of uh, see the ambience and other things. I'll, I'll explain that. Uh, I, I don't think this is a lecture, actually. This is actually sharing uh, my experience, and it will be somewhere sometimes on a personal note. Okay, so let's see. Uh, can we switch off the light? Oh, okay. Are you reading out from something? No, I'm not reading out. Okay, so heritage and community and inclusive people with approach. Uh, the ECOMOS conference, uh, which was done in December in Delhi, Delhi Declaration, the major theme was heritage and democracy and community participation in planning. What was the major declaration of that, because this was held in India, which happens in one in four years, to promote the inclusive democratic community engagement process of all the people, by all the people, and for all the people, and that too in the field of heritage. So that was that. I'm not uh, reading out. The declaration reflects the commitment by ECOMOS. ECOMOS is the international organization uh, uh, which looks after the uh, preservation of the built heritage and cultural heritage. Heritage and democracy as key ingredients in a people-based approach to sustainable development. Heritage is a fundamental right and responsibility of all. It is a starting point for a meaningful and equitable future that secures and celebrates diversity, social engagement, equity, and justice for all. Victoria Memorial. I have started my heritage, I think, from 90 onwards when I uh, I'm an architect and town planner, and then I studied with great people with the heritage. If that time, 90s, I would have come to Victoria Memorial, as I said, it will be a personal note, I would have looked at the marvelous grandeur, the artifacts, uh, the architectural history, foundation, construction, and everything. It's important, even now I look at this, but after I think almost uh, so many years, almost 30 years, when I come to Victoria Memorial, my interest lies somewhere else, and that is this, the people. Because I've realized, and that's what I'm going to share with you, how very important it is to include the people in the heritage, otherwise I, it remains a thankless task. Uh, as I told you that, I mean, that the, the Calcutta Museum, Victoria Memorial, how they are making the activities very inclusive, like the ant and the chonach, which has been there today. Think of the colonial era, the museum, and bring all the people-based activities from Australia and chonach, that interchange of the cultural thing, and including the people, the children, and other things, and that is what really makes heritage. But it's a very difficult task. And I miss that, but I'm sure that these, these uh, so many diverse things coming together at a place in a building where more than the fabric, the people becomes very important. And this is what actually that ECOMOS charter say. Now, before I start my journey and share something, I must also say where do I come from? Indian Institute of Technology, where 84, I started teaching there. And I don't know how many of you know that this is definitely a great center, the first Indian Institute of Technology in the center of Minnapur in a rural hinterland and other. But it has its history, a fantastic history. It started as a, a sort of a collectorate when the Bengal was supposed to be divided, Midnapur district was supposed to be divided, and then it never happened. Then it became a detention camp, and then it became a, 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 a I think, Air Force base during the Second World War. And then that place was there, a beautiful building, where uh, Dr. B. C. Roy suggested that the first Indian Institute of Technology comes there, huge campus. And that building is still there. It no longer serves as the administrative building, but it is now a Nehru Museum. But it continues its legacy in a beautiful way. 
And we are also, and not only that building, there are a lot of other structures, many of them have been demolished, and we are trying to make a heritage walk and see that, uh, and how the layers of history have been there in that place, and not many students know that. And uh, Onuradha, did you know that? You, Onuradha is there who has spent her child, who is there, uh, her father was my respected colleague. So the students don't know that there was a prison and other things, and there, and that's the history of that place. And that's what makes it interesting. But before I went to uh, Kharagpur, I knew that it was an IIT. But more important thing, it was the uh, longest platform that time. It was a railway township and a beautiful township. And even if you look at the pictures that time, I went and photographed each and every building. Many of the buildings are still there. But it's nowhere close to what it was, a beautiful township, which was. And it is the churches are there and other. And how it is being destroyed. But going from there, that when I started in IIT, my teaching as an architect, town planner, and I did become this thing. When I came back and started, a uh, learning experience started happening for me. And that I'm now looking back, I think I'm very fortunate that it happened there because it is surrounded by the rural hinterland. And that gave me a different dimension and which actually made this possible that I can see the other thing. If I would have been in a big city, I probably wouldn't have seen that. Probably, I'm not sure. And the person I'm talking about, probably many of you know that Muhammad Yasin Patan. He is now very old, he is ill, and he came to us with this Navaratno temple, which was in a very bad state, and he said that we want to preserve that. And he was again motivated by something. And we did a small, uh, me and my colleagues did a small pilot project, another thing. And ASI, though it was not an ASI building, ASI took care of that and restored that Navratna structure. And he can dream. He is a staff in a local school. He dreams that it can be a World Heritage Site. And the amount of motivation he can do and amount of things he can do really opened my mind that how the passion for heritage and how make things happen and other, how people-centric heritage is very important. And beautiful work. This was the structure which was there. And this was done. ASI did a very good project that time, and it became a center of attraction. They were private property. They were not taken by ASI that time. But what it did, actually, it gave a hope to the people of the surrounding areas who had temples or structures or mosques and others that, yes, this can be done. It can be done by ASI. This can be restored. So that hope that he kindled, he became a pioneer figure on that area, the entire rural hinterland of Mindapur. And people started coming to us. We have a temple. We have structure. We don't know. We want to save it, how to do it. We will raise money. We'll do a jatra, and we'll raise money. But just show us what to be done. We tried in a little way, but we know that it is not enough. But Yasin was the first time he showed us that what can be done. And then uh, what I did, what that time I could have just a mere lecturer that time, I used to take my students there and I said, okay, do a project, I'm teaching heritage, do a small brochure, this brochure which was there designed by them and do a walkthrough plan that as a class exercise. He will take that, go to DM, say that IIT has done that. Just get it printed for me. He had that type of planning and dream and idea that how to implement the thing. And then he said that I want to make it an archaeological survey site. I said, it's not possible. Yes, I will not take it up. He showed, he will drop up the hand, he will go to meet Kasturi Menon, Pranam Mukherjee, and other thing, borrow money, and other. And ultimately, it was declared as an archaeological ASI site. I never could think. The entire clusters, 64 or such clusters of temple and houses were taken up. Whatever has happened, I'll show later on. But that is, I came and did the project, and the, the hope it kindled in the rural hinterland with the people that Yasin has done that, why can't we do that? Yes, I will take it up. This was done, the, uh, that she temples, and then the Rashman show, beautiful. It's like a peacock, the Ponkhid Kaj, 
Monish is there who worked, everybody worked, and a beautiful work was done as a pilot project. But then I realized that this is not enough because ASI cannot do everything. So that time, actually inspired by him and seeing these people coming and telling us, I said, okay, let's start doing something. I knew there were already books where Tarapadurai and other things that they were, a lot of documentation was there that which temple, which structures and other. I started, started an MHRD project, the regional mapping of heritage structures. But what I realized by uh, interacting with Yasin, that it's not us who should do that. It's the local people who should do this heritage mapping, their heritage, because they are very proud of their heritage, maybe a small structure. So what I did, as I say, it will be a personal journey, a personal note. We, we trained the local people, and with the help of Yasin and other, identified the villagers, the teachers, school teachers, and other, and trained them how to measure a structure. Not a very accurate measured drawing, measured drawing, uh, point that, take a camera. We gave some very small cameras. Take a, I'm talking about 90s, so um, late 90s. So the camera, and in the process, 350 structures we documented. And the idea was to uh, put that in a GIS thing and there. Anyway, somehow it was a thing, I, the project I couldn't carry through at the end. The date, MHRD came and took away the rest of the money, whatever. But the thing is that it was done. And for me, it was an eye-opener that how one can really train the people and do their own heritage mapping, some documentation. As I say, the documentation was done, but not the photographic documents, not in a proper thing. It was not perfect, but it was done. But in the process, what happened, we have the photographs. This is Narajol, which is very important structure, Narajol Rajbari. And what I used to do, that every year when I used to teach, take my students, show them the other, that wrought iron work. They said that Bishu uh, Rabindranath got that inspiration from here for the Kachirbari in uh, that Kupashanagriyo in Shantiniketan. So we did that in a format, and it was possible to document 350 structures, like the Jolbari is there and other. And I've heard that some one of these structures is taken by ASI now or state archaeology, and they are doing the restoration. So this is that, that how we are trying to put it in a GIS thing and design an interactive data management. That time I was also new to GIS and incentives. But I realized that everybody was looking for some work, that it should give them a meaningful, fruitful work. It should not only document how to preserve the structure, because many of the structures were on the verge of deterioration and demolition, and how to create the employment opportunities for youth. That was a very important part of that process. Now, coming back to Patra, I mean, just yesterday when I was searching that, because we go, our conference happens, people used to go to Patra, we used to take up their Yasin has become very well, unwell, and is complaining that they are not taking care. ASI is not really taking care of in the proper way. What Yasin and I, that news or uh, a Facebook comment said that that place has become a place for where the young students of school are gathered, they drink, and they sort of do some notorious things and other sweeters become a thing. And he has been fighting all along life to get the money from ASI. There, his was a life threat because he comes from a different community. So this is a different story. But I'm sure that the ASI state archaeology taking care of this heritage is not the solution. And that's what I have been telling them. So what's the solution? Because I will show them, I'll share some of the things later on, that what type of structures and beautiful structures, and heritage structures we have in the rural hinterland. And how people love them, are proud about them, and what they do without any support. So what can be the support? I was looking for INTAC is one, Indian National Trust, of, which started as a uh, sort of someone who is the watchdog and an NGO. There is Sahapedia, 
now there are many, many other organizations, rural heritage and development has come up, Bangla Natuk Dam has come up, Cal has come, is working for Cal. Each one of these NGOs, and they are very, very powerful. Uh, powerful in a sense, meaningful role they can play, powerful not in another sense, that their role in this is absolutely important. And many more, depending on the, because I remember Yasin, we told them that he was doing it al al alone. I said, first of all, you have to make a heritage conservation committee. Otherwise, you don't have an stand. So he did that. And then we started the thing. This is another thing which is unique in West Bengal is the West Bengal Heritage Commission. There is no other state in India which has a state-wise, there is a city-wise and other things, but West Bengal Heritage Commission, there is a statutory power, a legal power, which is absolutely important and can do. And they're doing a lot of things. And, but if you see the scale, it's not, it's not possible for them to take care of everything. Now, in the meantime, a lot of years have passed and then intact, few years back came and told me that we are doing an inventory, you do something. I said, what do, what do you do in the inventory? And uh, I don't have time. Initially, I tried to sort of, I'm so glad. Ultimately, I, I sort of agreed to do that because these same areas, I have to, taken Midnapur, Purbo, and Purshi Midnapur, West and East Midnapur, and Bakura, and then a few. And because Kamal Babu is there, they also from intact side, they have did earlier a lot of work. What gave me this opportunity, which I didn't do last time, is that each and every site, I went myself because I didn't have the local people to work with. I had a few trainees and then uh, who just say that we'll work and on the entire summer vacation, we used to go there. The accessibility has improved. The Pradhan Mantri Gram Shadok Jojuna has really worked. I can see that I can go to the many of the structures where I went. We did 250 structures that we had, but it was an eye opener for me. I can't share everything with you. And I'm very, uh, very angry with Intact that they are not doing anything about that. I don't know what they are supposed to do. At least there is a report which is there. I, I thought that some pilot project should come out of that. That's a different story, but it gave me the opportunity to go. And many of the structures which are done earlier, they are no longer there. I mean, we see that in the book they are there, but they are no longer there. Or in such a situation that it is not there. So, but as I say that, I